Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about competing with low-cost developers. Okay, so today I want to answer a question that came in on episode 494 from Abdenesser Bentaleb who says, what do you think about the third world freelancers that will take any project for a fraction of what you charge? Do you see them as competition or what? Because the way I deal with them is by delivering as fast as possible and being able to talk three languages as fluently so I can communicate better with the clients because I know most of them are remote locations and the interactions are slow and their English is broken. Abdenesser, that's a really good question. That's a really good point. Being able to deliver fast and being able to communicate really well will put you above them all the time because your clients will begin to trust you and if you deliver fast, you can build up that portfolio and those testimonials, then you're going to start building a little bit of credibility and they will pay more for your service because they know it will get done. If you've ever hired like a really low cost freelancer, the biggest problem you have in your mind is I hope they can do this. He has no experience, no portfolio behind them. They say they can do it. We're going to go with that. We, we've done a few tests with them, make sure they can do it, but you have that doubt, right? And that's something that you're, you don't, never want your clients to have. You never want your clients to doubt you, right? I know, do I see these guys as competition? The reality is that no, I don't. I, just, I can't. You know, they're, we're, we're, we're doing different things. We're dealing with, with larger clients and, you know, we, and we have to assure them that things are going to get done. And a lot of times these lower cost freelancers, not to be disparaging, is, it's like their first job. It's their first couple of jobs. And you know, there's, you know, there's only so much they can do. It's, if you go on Upwork, and when I think of low cost freelancers, I think about Upwork. If you go on Upwork and do a search for Android developer, and I've never hired an Android developer from Upwork, but I've searched. Right? If you go on there and search Android developer, you're going to get a list of whatever, thousands of people. And it's going to be, you're going to see some people at $50 an hour, some people at $25 an hour, most at $25 an hour, I find. And then you're going to see some people at $5 an hour and maybe you know, $3 an hour. It's going to be something ridiculously low. Now, if you don't know what you're doing and you're just like, I, I just know I need an Android developer and, and any Android developer is as good as the next, then you're going to go on there and you're going to just, you're going to go to the bottom of the list. Or maybe if you're thinking, oh, that guy is 350, that's ridiculous but I'm gonna go with the guy who's at four dollars an hour right and you know they might be the best developer in the world who knows but you know, your perception of them is always gonna be low like let's say if you hired somebody for four dollars an hour as an Android developer and then they started working for you and they started giving you code even if they were the best developer in the world you would doubt everything they did because you're thinking well there's got to be a reason he's charging so little for it so you don't want to get in that situation this may sound cruel, it may sound rude, and I hope I don't, this doesn't sound offensive, but I consider the low cost freelancers as competition in the way that a plumber considers a hardware store to be competition. If somebody wants to, if somebody thinks, I just need an Android developer, I wanna manage the whole project myself, and code quality is not a big deal, or you know, I, I just, they wanna hire that person and try to do it themselves, and they can, but they probably end up the same way I do when I try to do the plumbing myself because it's just a mess and it just leaks everywhere, right? So I, I don't, don't think it is. There, there are people who charge far less than, than we do, obviously, and probably you guys do too, but there are people who charge far more. And it's like, you can't think, how can we go lower so we catch up with those guys? It's like, how do we deliver value so we can catch up with the other guys? How do we distinguish ourselves from them. Do our clients come with us with the assurance that these are going to get done? Abdenesser, when you say we get projects done fast and communicate well, I think that's an excellent. I think branding yourself is really good too, making sure that people know about you. The best thing you can have happen with your client is when they talk to you, they go, this guy gets it. He gets what I'm talking about, right? And that's, that, that's what I love to hear when I talk with new clients, right? You know, it seems like we could really work with you, Eric. I love that. And that's a lot of it is just working on the soft skills, communication, keep up with the development. You could still hire some of those low cost freelancers, but you know, it, you, software development is such a, a, a tricky thing. You have to make sure that they have really good skills and not just skills, but like problem solving. Cause it's not doing the hello world program or I read a book and do it. It's that first problem that comes up hey, for some reason we're getting this 404 error when we connect to this service or something like that, right? 
what's the problem solving thing and that comes from experience and experience adds price so those are just my thoughts on it I would love to hear from the rest of you guys out there what do you do do you think about low-cost freelancers in third world countries as competition and if you do what do you do to distinguish yourself how do you set yourself apart from them right because if everything was driven by price then we, we couldn't compete but that's why we we build up experience and portfolios and it, you know, and, and this legacy behind us so that we could do that not just as a software company but as just software employees your CV is your most value if you're an employee your CV is your most valuable asset going forward but you should also be looking at the other branding opportunities around you so anyway what do you guys think anyway that is it for today I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow Thank you.